In all of my excitement, I actually forgot to introduce the woman I was speaking with. So, please meet Lisa Miller, ABC News Breakfast co-host, former foreign correspondent, and now published author. So, stick around for our chat. Hello, everyone. Well, I am really excited. I get to, well, work with this woman every day. Tables are turning a little bit because I'm doing the interviewing. Full disclosure, we're in a work bubble, so masks are off. Very kind to say, Fear, that it's all good. But hi! Hi! Look oh, at you all fresh I, face. Well, I know. This is how <laughs> I normally appear at four o'clock in the morning, and then Kerry makes me look fabulous. Oh, and I'm using any excuse to put some lipstick on. So <laughs> here we are. But you know why we are here? Because of this bestseller. I only came out on Wednesday, already up on the bestsellers list, and so it should be. Oh, it's a cracker, my friend. Thank you. Oh. What did you like most about it? It was, it really was a page turner. It was super descriptive. So I felt that I was living every, you know, you talk a lot about, you know, the events of the world that you covered as a foreign correspondent. So it's so descriptive that I felt like I was like, there was like, like reading a screenplay to a movie sometimes. Oh, wow, okay. Like that, oh, I'm, what happens? I'm, we know what happens, but like, oh my God, I'm t paid, turn page. Oh, can can page you make Jolie play me if it's the movie? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, there are parts in it, I have to confess, that I struggle to still read. And, you know, I had to read it quite a few times because it was so harrowing. My heart was racing and I look back at it and think, I lived that at the time. But as a journalist, you're so good at compartmentalising things mm. and putting things in a box that you get through that period. And it's only when you're looking back at it, when you're sitting down and writing, that you realise... Blimey, that was a big time. It really was. Mm. Like, and there's so many events that you covered. We won't cover across them because you will read the book. It's just great. Um, but I did put the, quest, the the call out there to get some questions. And I do have some. So uh, let's get cracking into them. This is from Peter, who happens to be my mum. Thanks, mum. Hello, Mum's Peter. a big fan. Hello, <laughs> but she got in there with some questions. Is there anything that you would do differently? Um, That's a big no, question, isn't it? It's quite I down. know, oh. but I actually have the answer because... No is the answer because even if there are things that didn't go the way I thought they would go or maybe I had hoped that something else might have happened, I don't live with regrets and I think my life has been a, a life of sliding doors. It's for everyone. You make a decision and it's the right decision at the time and that's the only thing that you can think about. I don't get to this point in my life and think it was a wrong idea to choose not to have children or it was a wrong idea to go overseas for the first time at the age of 32 because that is a time when a lot of women are thinking about mm. having children but they were the decisions that felt right at the time and so for me they're still the right decisions mm. and I mean that's something that you you uh, you lived your life that way anyhow like the, the book does give an insight into who you are I think very much you are very much a silver linings person mm. um, which is reflective on so much that you do you always see the better in something which leads me into Brett's question who I think is really apt for that is like having reported on some of the most terrible acts that people are capable of how do you not become jaded towards the human race um look good question Brett uh, <laughs> it's there is something innate about my personality and I don't quite know where it's come from, but I have this ability to reframe bad things. Um, even with this book, A Year of COVID, bad. I wrote a book. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, uh, there was this moment when I was going to a psychiatrist after my marriage ended and I was driving along thinking, uh, my life is pretty shit right at the moment. And then I pulled up at these red lights uh, on Turbot Street in Brisbane and the wind blew and this jacaranda dumped all these flowers onto my windscreen. So I couldn't see anything. And I laughed with joy at these flowers falling on me. And it just felt like even when you think you're at your worst moment, something lovely could be just around the corner. Yeah. And now someone else might have had that happen and immediately put their windscreen wipers on and then the jacarandas would have mushed up and made a mess of their windscreen and then they might have been shitty for the rest of yeah. the day. And that's that whole sliding doors yeah. moment. It could be something as small as that or as something big as a life-changing decision yeah. like wanting to go overseas, which you had to get over. This yeah. is part of the big part of the book too, is that fear of flying, yeah. which a lot of people can relate to. So are people reaching out to you 
hearing this now about you. Yeah, no, look, and it's part of the reason um, I wanted to write about this is because even in social settings when it would come up and people would say, you had a fear of flying for a decade and you dreamed of becoming a foreign correspondent. I mean, they're kind of fascinated with that concept. And so I ended up doing a fear of flying course. I was cured. Um, it took a lot of work, but I really hope that it gives encouragement to other people, not just fear of flying, for any fear. Mm. And, and I was really afraid of flying. Like yeah. I couldn't have got, I mean, I did have to get on planes all the time, but even just to fly from Brisbane to Sydney would make me feel ill. So it was a big deal. Mm. And it just also goes to show that I didn't know that there were such courses oh, yes. available, which is incredible, but there is help. I mean, this is quite poignant for our times. Oh, yes. Well, and anything that one is going through, there is always help available should you seek and ask the right questions to get to where you need to go. Yeah, Don't exactly. You, you just, and I mean, I had to be forced into it because it was my husband at the time who said to me, we can't go on like this with mm. the fear of flying dominating our lives and it was because of him that I finally made the decision to do something and I am so glad I did because here's the other thing about getting over a fear it's the most empowering feeling it's like putting on a Wonder Woman cape because you think if you get over a fear of flying you can do anything because yeah. it just shows you how strong you can be to overcome something like that put on your gold ribbon yeah. pew, pew. oh yeah <laughs> I know. I love it. That's it's kind of this sense of invincibility. Yeah, it does. It feels great. Uh, and so here's the reframing again, right? A year, ten years, I had a fear of flying, even you know, threatened to ruin my honeymoon. It was you know, and I was going to Europe, and all I did was sob at airports around Europe. But guess what? If I had not had that fear of flying and recovered from it, I then would not have experienced the empowerment that came with overcoming a fear. Mm. And so that goes to that whole reshaping what happens to you. You can see everything in the negative or you could turn it around and go, okay, well, how is this a positive? And for whatever reason, I don't know, I think I've inherited it from, from someone in the family yeah. that I have that ability to see the positive. Yeah. And it goes to Brett's question I've sort of gone off a bit sorry mm. from Brett but when Brett says when you think humanity is can be so vile mm. actually I see I see the good bits of humanity mm. as well yeah and I was thinking uh, earlier about this this question too sometimes in the sense of like from my perspective being a creative like I know when September 11 happened um, and I was only talking about this uh, the other day with my son Connor because the anniversary is coming up and he asked me where were you when it was happening mm -hmm. and at the time I was getting ready for spring racing carnival I was making hats and I was really having this kind of crisis almost on my own going how can I be doing this as I'm picturing a hat in my hand here how can I be doing that when all of this is going on in the world and it was a challenging time thinking well how to reconcile that and it took a while and talking to lots of other creators as well going well we it's okay to be doing this Mm, well, I think it is okay also because I think at moments when things like that have gone on in my world that actually you just want to be doing something normal. When the world feels like it's imploding and you, you just, like I, I was covering a terrorist attack in Turkey, we covered dozens of people dying and then we went to the airport and I was pushing the trolley of camera gear around the departure lounge up and down, up and down. My cameraman said, what the hell are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm trying to get my steps up on my Fitbit. <laughs> yeah. And he thought it was so funny, but it was like, that was my little bit mm. of trying to almost prove to myself, it's okay, I've got a normal life. I've got a normal life still, when clearly I did yeah. not. It was quite um, an unusual existence at that time. Yeah, and that simple message of keeping that normalcy is so prevalent more than ever when, when the world is going through this crisis, which we don't want to talk about on here because no. we know it's going on, <laughs> but it's people that, that normalcy, going out for a walk or doing something that gives you joy. Yeah, I guess exactly. It's, um, super Joy's my little name. I know. <laughs> and one thing, I'm going to segue here, one thing that I love about the book too is the naming of the chapters are have all aviation references and I love it. It's because it was very clever. Thank you. <laughs> That's my idea. Oh, well, I, wondered, I wondered what the publisher was going to think. It's really cool. So, you know, return ticket is when I'm coming back to Australia, lift off when I'm going for my terrific. first job. Yeah, and I bet you know the, what's the language with the Alfa Romeo tank? Oh, what, what do you yeah, call it? Yeah. Um, so what's the well, tank? I call it the aviation aviation language it's like um, aeronautical language um, look the military will use it 
but Delta Echo, Foxtrot, yeah. Golf, Hotel India, Juliet, <laughs> yeah. Tango, Zulu. Tango. Oh yeah, well Foxtrot's my favourite. I love the Foxtrot. Oh no, you know what's my favourite? What? Whiskey. Oh my God. <laughs> we know what you're doing on a Friday night. We'll finish up with one last question. It's a bit of a two-parter. Did you have any reservations whilst writing, this is from Andrew, whilst writing the book? And did the process come easily to you? Process did not come easily. I had to be convinced to do it. And um, the publisher said to me, look, you just might enjoy it. And I guess, you know, those many hours I spent by myself in Melbourne through COVID, I'd still wake up very early on a weekend and I'd get up and I'd just start writing. And some days it wouldn't happen and other days it would. There were parts in there that were difficult to write and I would just have tears running down my face as I remembered things and, you know, the, yeah, it was, it was hard, but um, I'm really glad that I've done it. I'm glad that I've done it for my family. My two, two of my nieces, a 16 year old and a 13 year old, have both read it. They demolished it in like 24 hours and they just said, we're so proud of you. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter if no one else in the world reads it, that filled my heart with joy. Well, I know a lot of people are reading it because you know, the sales are looking good, um, but it is a really wonderful, wonderful read and I'm so very proud of you. And and to be a part of it in some sense, yeah. oh look, I did the hair and makeup on the oh, back yes. cover. She made me look so beautiful. <laughs> so that's my little face Makeup the and hair. Thank you. But, um, but knowing like, what you were doing last year and it was so funny because a lot of the times we would start chatting in the makeup chair and it's like no nope, i'm going to save that it's going to go in the I book know. i'm like don't i don't want any spoilers and i'd start I telling a story yeah. and then i'd go oh chapter no. eight <laughs> <laughs> well it's a cracker people get onto it through booktopia all good bookstores of course support your local bookstores yeah lovely. do it click and do it click and collect yeah, yeah get across it i'm very proud of you thanks gary amazing work thank you